This is the Dutchman's Puzzle Block. It's also called the Wheel or the Dutchman's Wheel Block. And it's made with eight flying geese units. And we've made these units four flying geese at a time. And later in the video, I'll show you how that's done. Here are the units for the Dutchman's Puzzle. It's actually a four patch block. You take eight flying geese units and you sew them together in pairs and both the geese are all flying in the same direction. And then you just lay these out so that it forms a pinwheel in the center. So you have a pinwheel in the center and then you have other geese on the side. This Dutchman's puzzle is made with three different colors. The sky part of the flying geese is the background and then the, the triangles, the geese, are done in two different colors. And you see that the inside colors, the purple, forms a pinwheel going in this direction. And to get this effect, you sew your flying geese together like this. So the fabric at the bottom will be the pinwheel. So this will be sewn together like this. And so here you have the teal pinwheel in the center and the purple on the outside. Next, I'll show you how to piece flying geese four at a time. And if you look in the video description, you'll see the size squares you need to cut for what size flying geese you need. Now for the flying geese four at a time, you're going to cut one large square and this will be the geese, that's the triangle in the center. And you'll cut four small squares and this is the sky. <clears throat> it's the two triangles on the outside of the flying geese unit. You'll take the small squares, the sky, and mark one diagonal line on each one. Then you're going to take two squares and line up the corner of the large square and then the corner, the opposite corner of the large square. So you make sure that the edges are even and these, this diagonal line lines up. And you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of the diagonal line. Now you're going to cut on the diagonal line that you drew and you're going to press these toward the dark side, the darker fabric, which in this case is this direction, and then cut off the nubs. Now here we have the two pieces. They're pressed to the dark side and the nubs have been taken off. Now you're going to take your remaining triangles, line up this edge like this, and line up this, the same thing over here, and you're going to stitch a quarter inch on each side of the diagonal line on each one. Now once you've stitched, you're going to cut, cut it in half on the diagonal line that you drew. And I wanted to show you this closer. If you can see where this line of stitching meets the edge, this little intersection here of the top fabric and the bottom fabric, your stitching should be right at that point on both sides. Once you have your geese sewn, you're going to sew them together in pairs and then put the pairs together. And I always, when I put these uh, four patches together, I press towards the flying geese part here. And what you're going to do is, on the back, you're going to need to take some stitches off of the middle because you want these seams to be pressed in a circular direction. You can see this is this way, that way, down, and to the right. And I'll show you how to get this flat seam here in the center. Now here is the line I just stitched and it makes the majority of the block. But before we press it, we're going to remove the stitches on this piece. If you look, here is the line we just stitched, so we're going to remove these stitches here. We 
And so those stitches are gone. Flip it over and remove these stitches right here. These are a little bit harder to find, but they remove too. Now when you open it up, you're going to press this side first, this toward the dark, and then flip it over like this. So you've pressed this way towards the dark. Then you're going to find the middle of the seam. And this part you need to press toward the dark on this side. So you have to open up this seam and you'll see it makes like a little swirl in the center. And give that a good press. And this seam is pressed down and this seam is pressed up. So when you flip it over and after it's pressed, you'll be able to feel that center is nice and flat. There's no big lump there. Now we have our three different versions of the Dutchman's Puzzle. And next I'll show you some possible layouts you can use. Thank you for watching.